Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Breaking Bread. I'm Monsignor Jamie, where I bring together life's most important ingredients, family, faith, friends, and most importantly, food. Today, I have on a special guest, a friend of mine, Antonio Tatino. He is the CEO of o d Construction, and he has worked on some very big projects in the New York area, the stadium at Wagner College, the New York Stock Exchange, Zavarian High School, and the one and only Amaya Center. He is a very good cook as well. So he's going to tell us a little bit about cooking. I'm going to tell him a little about construction, and we're going to have a very interesting show. Some people mistaken him for an actor, but I don't know. See you then. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. Today we have with us Antonio Tutino, CEO of o d Builders. I'm Antonio Tutino of o d Builders. I'm the CEO of o d Builders. We do work for the New York Stock Exchange, Verizon, clientele like SL Green. We have a division of healthcare, we have a division of education, and a division of hospitality. So, Monsignor, I know you dabble in construction and in cooking, as do I. I just want you to know there's a new GC in town. Antonio. Monsignor, thank, thank you for, you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, uh, you're an actor? Uh, I often get confused for one until they see me act and then they realize, no, he probably does construction. I don't know why would they would think you're an actor. Couldn't tell you. I mean, Couldn't usually tell you. an actor is, you know, good looking. And Tall, stuff like you know, Tall, but thank skinny, God I have none know. of those qualities, no, so great. we're good. But you are the CEO oh. of o d Builders. That's right, yes. Now, you worked on some very big projects. We've been fortunate, yeah. We've had some really amazing opportunities. I have an amazing team behind me, like you had mentioned. We worked for the New York Stock Exchange. We had an honor to work at Severian, the extension for them. I've been there, it's really this, great. The, the Genesis program, absolutely amazing program and an absolutely amazing school. And currently working for Wagner College, the extension of their stadium, along with some of the renovations on the interior of the campus throughout. So right. we've been very, very and fortunate. And you're doing some work for us at the Emmaus And Center. I've been most fortunate to work with you guys at the Emmaus Center. Isn't that a is, great venue? It is an unbelievable yeah. venue. It really is something breathtaking where I think you really have to see it to understand yeah. it. The it first really opera is. house on all of Long Island. And it is amazing. It's yeah. apt, acoustically, you know, aesthetics. It's just amazing. Yeah. It really is a beautiful We really place. want to use that place for evangelization and the diocese is going to use it a lot. So I can't really, see anybody you know, walking in there and ever wanting to leave. It's just amazing. It really is a beautiful place. Now, how did you get into cooking? I think culturally it's illegal for us not to be into cooking, and especially in my household. You grow up where everything actually kind of ends at the dinner table, where we're all there. At the end of the day, we're at the dinner table, and we're just speaking about a day and helping each other. What happened? And how do we make it better? And how do we move on? And I think it begins at the dinner table. And it also <laughs> starts there very early in my household. We Sometimes all day we very, long, very, very early. The same thing with me. I got into cooking because, you know, in the house, all we did was eat. Everyone cooked. My father cooked. My mother cooked. We all cooked. And you That's cannot, right. you know, get away from it. I tell you, I often joke. I say some of the meals we have, my mother would cook like tomorrow's a rumor. It was like a marathon, five, six hours at the table. And it was just amazing. It was just an amazing experience. One of the most amazing parts of my childhood. That's great. That's great. Now, I know in a few minutes, you're going to prepare something yeah. for us. We're not going to tell them what it is yet. Oh, no, we'll hold off. But so you're going to take over. You're going to be the, uh, I would say, the GC of this. this so we're going to switch. I'm getting into the kitchen and you're going to go yeah. take over the jobs. And then I'll tell you a little bit about construction. You know, I like to do construction. I, I'm always ready to listen. You know, no, I've, I've seen I, some I, of I, your construction. <laughs> renovated a couple of churches, a, a couple of rectories, so. a couple of convents, everything, right? Beautiful but, uh, but I want to yeah. hear a little bit about your family. Sure. You know, uh, you know what you do, and you know how you got into construction, and a few uh, other things about the construction industry. Yeah, the current one. The current which is one. Different than city, the one from yesterday. It's changing. It's a different animal. You know, it this really area really of Williamsburg. I mean, all of New York is changing. They've all erupted, but you have to look at them now with a different lens because you're not using experience to say what downstream on the market is going to look like. Right. Because there is no experience of right. COVID. Right. It is now what's today, and you right. just have to be resilient. You have to keep your faith because right. you really need it and to get through to what is going to be the new norm. Because right. I think everyone is expecting to go back to what it was and really life doesn't work that way. It's just going to be the new norm. I think the key, you have to be open to change. Yeah. And a lot of people are not open to change. You have to you know, be open to change, but also you have to be rooted. Yes. You have to have a foundation. Yes. And you know, our faith is our foundation. Our family values are our foundation our upbringing, and that all comes out, especially when change comes in, because it can be very stressful. Very. And if very. you don't, you know, keep focused to 
what you're doing, why you're doing it, yes. and how you're doing, how you're working with other people, how you treat other people, that's so important no, to change. Very true. The path often changes, but the goal and the faith, the roots right. that we have can never change. Those are you know, ingredients that are stationary, that right. can never be changed. The route to the goal, that often changes, yes. and that's where you need to be adaptive exactly. and do so. So we're gonna take a little break. Sure. We're gonna take a break, don't go away, and Antonio's gonna put some of his cooking skills to work. Be right back. traditional dish for us would be in lieu of our Sunday sauce, on a Sunday we may have a pasta with a crab sauce. This dish particularly holds a special place in our heart, in my heart, because when I was a child my father used to take us crabbing, so it was something that when I make it I think about those days, you know, with my father. Welcome back to Breaking Bread with Antonio Tatino from o d Builders, and today we're going to switch places. You're going to be the general contractor for this show. For the kitchen. And I'm going to give some pointers about construction. I look forward to it. All right, let's go. I look forward to it. <laughs> so what are you going to make today? All right, so today we're going to make what was a traditional summer dish for us. Okay. Was, uh, They're alive. It's alive. This one happens to be alive. Okay. Yeah, this is. these are blue claw crabs, okay. right? Okay. So this you is... You have to get them from the back, Always right? from the back. They'll oh, grab well. you underneath. Wait, See wait, that? what'd you try to do? I got you. See, you I want to take over the show. I know. I you want. already. <laughs> See, look, he wants to cook too. So he wants to eat. He's got to be careful with them. Okay. Typically, if you get them at your, your the store, your local let me, let fish me, market, from the back. grab back here like this. Right, just right, right. There you go. Okay. You want them to clean it because okay. you don't want to run the risk of you're getting close, a little bit close. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but ultimately, after they're cleaned out, they'll look like this. Okay. You'll try so to clean you, them as much you as you can. You pull out the backs, right? You'll pull the shell off the, on the side. There'll be like these fins. You pull them off on the right. side. You'll pull the organ off the bottom. You'll pull some of the stuff that's in the front. Typically, see, you almost got me twice now. That's good. <laughs> But typically, you'll see that they'll have even eggs. If there right. are eggs, leave they're them orange. Usually, they're right? orange. You know, I used they to go crabbing a lot. I love to go crabbing out on Long Perfect. Island. And it's, so you know it's exactly what I'm saying. You shine the light in the water; they all come out, and at that's night. it. And yes. you scoop them up, yes. or you go to the store. Right now, certain times of the year, you have the soft shell crabs. Soft. So right. every crab, at some point or another, becomes a soft right. shell crab. It's when they're shedding their that right. layer, that okay. skin. Uh, so I'll you getting close again? <laughs> so you know what we'll do with this one? We'll put him. We'll put him here for a little bit so we don't run the risk of getting hurt. All right. So we'll start, right? Pan, extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Decent amount of extra. This is a dish that needs we'll olive oil. On medium? Medium, perfect. This is a dish that needs olive oil and garlic. Okay. Can't be shy with either. Those well, are the key Like we said, those are the Italian roots meal. that start with everything. Garlic. I'm sure olive there's oil. breakfast in the Italian culture that starts with this. Okay, so we have a decent amount there. You'll wait for this to warm up a little. Okay. Then you'll place, depending on how many, we're two for today. Right. You could put five or six crabs. Bottom There's not down. much meat in there. Yeah. No, listen to me. I have, in other times, changed these for Dungeness crab. Right. Where it's a much meatier, right. where it becomes two trays. You know, it's, it's really an answer. But part of crab, uh, eating crabs is the experience. Very you much know, so. You know, finger You food. went at night yes. where you shine the light. I exactly. went during the day with a piece of fish or right. at the time the a net. piece of chicken yeah, yeah. and you would scoop them right. up and you pass the day having yeah. a conversation very much like the dinner yeah. table. It's a lot of fun when oh, you yeah. start eating them with your fingers like french fries. Oh, they this is better. this is labor intensive. <laughs> yeah. This is labor intensive. I have to tell you, my mother, God rest her soul, she used to love crab. She had patience, which really she didn't have patience with much. She's like me. Yeah. But when it came to eating crab, she would suck the meat out of every claw <laughs> Take that out. My of sister, here. <laughs> when we make this dish, my sister-in-law sits at the table. She takes the yeah. time. It's a joy to see. It's, it's really delicious. something amazing. And of course, I love the sauce. Fresh tomatoes. So, so fresh homemade tomato. Homemade There's tomato. a difference. So this will jar them. Have, this is the whole. Okay. Here we'll have the puree. Um, and you jar have, these at home. This we jar at okay. home. Another family day, a very I think labor intensive. One day, day we'll do that. Hands we'll down, come take be, the show there yeah. and about jarring tomatoes. And they have it down to an art form. And they stay in these jars. So Peel once jaws. you jaw this, they get boiled. You right. then they're vacuum sealed. You'll see that oh, this one we already opened, but the top is concave. Sure. When you pop it, you hear that click, very much like a soda can. Right. Would so they'll say, I mean, a year or oh, two. Oh, yeah. two, three years. Yeah. yeah, hands down. Okay. So I think we're ready. So what we'll do is we'll start up here. Got a couple in. I hear them sizzling already. Right. Typically, you'd want to throw even some garlic in at the same time. Okay. Right. Whole so cold, cold, but crushed. Like I said, you don't want to. So you crush them. Then you, you crush them. Yeah. You hit them down like that. 
Yep. They you, open up, but you know they don't fall apart. They so don't much. open up. Exactly. So what you want to do is you want to cook the garlic, but you do not want to burn the garlic. If you burn the garlic, it's actually easier to start over. Oh yeah, you can never, never do anything with burnt no. garlic. This oil happens to be pretty hot already. Okay. And the typical sign for me is when at this distance you're smelling the garlic. As soon as you smell the garlic, you know that they're ready. We'll stop placing the crab. Okay. Right. You want to. Put that flame up a little bit. Want to go a little higher here? I don't want to tell you what to do. You know? I see that you're very, you know, you're very laid back in the kitchen. I see that you're not. Nah. So nah, I have nah. to, I have to put you to work a little bit. So what I'm going to do a little bit is we'll have you dice up some of the parsley. Okay. Right. I know we had a knife right over here. Right. There's our knife. Oh, right here. You got the knife. Go. Okay. Get cut up this little small knife. Okay. And I'll start plating these. And I know you brought me something today, right? You brought me some of your homemade wine? Yes. Right? This is your red homemade wine. We already poured out your white, which we're gonna need for this okay. dish. You see the name of that wine? Monsignor Jamie, a taste of heaven in Brooklyn. I like that. And that's where we are. Is this Brooklyn. a parting gift for me when I go? Yeah, of course, of course. I've been making this wine for about eight to 10 years, but we didn't make it in the last couple of years. I love the labels. Because of the pandemic. Oh yeah. Yeah, bam. That's it, we'll start it up. <laughs> So when they turn red, you're gonna right. see them turn red. We're gonna add some salt. We're gonna add some pepper flakes, some red pepper flakes. Okay. We're gonna put in the wine, and then you're gonna let the wine cook out. You'll see the alcohol cook out. Burn out, okay. Once again. But the flavor remains. The flavor remains. Once again, you're testing it with smell. So you okay. can smell the wine cook out. So what are we, we're two people. Typically, this is an argument in my house. A pound of pasta, they say, is for four people. Four people. I, I disagree. I think it's for three. But it all depends what else you're having with it. That's very, very if it's true. The first of seven courses, yes. we can get it maybe yes. five or six. Yes. But if that's the main course, I think three to a pound. I agree. Yeah. Especially when you have uh, you know something like crabs and not much meat. There's there. this is this is more of an aesthetic for me. Others it's a meal, but for me this is more of aesthetic it flavors the sauce. So Let you'll see they'll the, start. Uh, yeah, pasta. hands down. Some weenie. So these are already starting to turn red, Monsignor, so I'm gonna start turning them. Okay. This needs a few more minutes. We want this al dente, right? Yeah, so figure, for me, al dente is probably about right. eight minutes or so. Now, al dente means to, to the bite. To the bite. So that when you, you know, it's not soft or soggy. The pasta should be, Yeah, it you know, should have, I don't want to say it, it should stick within your teeth, right. but it should have a little bit of a bite. Now, we're using linguine and not spaghetti. Linguine. I like linguine, linguine. it's a, a bit of flatter, flat. a little wider. It grabs the sauce a little right. more, and I think it's more traditional when it comes to a seafood linguine and white clam sauce. Right. It's a bit more traditional. Boy, that smells great. Right? So now, you start to smell that. Now what we do, the wine. Wine. If you ask my mother, she couldn't give you a measurement, but this is probably about a half a cup of wine. Okay. Wow. Right? That'll cook out. In the meantime, we don't waste this, no, right? No, no, no. We'll drink that later. What do we do? We pour oh, some here. Okay. And it is the summer. Okay. So what do we do? We got to put some peaches in there as well, no? Oh. You put peaches in the white wine. I put peaches in we everything. We always put it in the red wine. We used to put it in all of our wines because we used to make one and we were never good at it. Okay. So you had to add something to it so it tasted a little better. Mm. Salud. Cheers. It's amazing, the peach. Oh. The flavor goes to the wine immediately. Oh yeah. Okay, so now what, what so else? So now this is the, the, the alcohol's cooking out of the wine, okay. right? You can smell it. Oh. If you come close, you'll be able to smell that it's already a different flavor. Oh, and you throw some parsley in there. We have the garlic in there. So the now oil. we're going to put salt. Salt. Right? Red pepper to taste. I like it a little spicy. I like it spicy too. And you know, I try to stay away from the salt. So I usually compensate that with a little hot pepper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have a little basil. Wow. You threw some parsley, but we're going to add a bit more. Okay. Wasn't enough, right? Well, I listen. Like I said, today I'm the uh, I'm the I'm the cook. You know, I, I I visited some of your work. There were a few things I saw here and there that I would have done differently. I have I'll to have a shot up at later. the altar so I can say something <laughs> on a Sunday. So now with whole tomatoes, you don't just put them in. You bring them, and you break them in. Okay. So these are whole tomatoes. These are whole not tomatoes. the puree. Tomatoes. We're gonna put the puree as well. Okay. Right. We're gonna put the puree as well. Wow. We don't have to put too many here. All right. So I may. I want to check the pasta. Yeah, hands down. And I'll put the sauce in here. I'll put the puree in here. Antonio, I think it's done. You think so? 
All right, so I guess we could take that There's out. There's only one way to find out. That's it. Drain the water out, you burn your fingers. Perfect. So now, Monsignor, this dish actually can be cooked, if you wanted to, the day before. The longer this crab stays in this sauce, the more flavor it absorbs. Really? Yeah. What you would do with this is actually you would cook it, you would get it to where it's ready, you would take it, let it get to room temperature, cover it, put it in the refrigerator. Tomorrow, warm it up a bit, right? So you'll you just put, put the a, whole pot right in the refrigerator? You can put the whole pot if you'd like. You can take the crabs out if you'd like, and then you're just yeah. kind of reheating it. But the longer that sauce stays Everything with that... Everything melts together. It's unreal. It, ta it takes what a flavor. It smells delicious. Typically, it's something Sunday morning we would make. And you, we eat dinner relatively early, one right. two o'clock on a Sunday, and it'll last somewhere to right. that's Monday. Sunday dinner. <laughs> yeah. Sunday dinner is one to three in the afternoon. And that's it. And it just goes and, and goes. And then nighttime is snacks. And, which is also <laughs> in many and other people would see it as a dinner just the yeah. same. So now, if we did this the day before, we would not cook the pasta. No, until naturally the last you would not. Yeah, okay, you we'll, get the pasta within five ten minutes of when great. you're ready to eat. I can't wait to taste this. Oof, me too. Don't go away. We're gonna come back, and Antonio's gonna give us his crab and the wing. Welcome back. I'm here with Antonio Tatino from Owen D. Builders. And today he prepared for us linguine with crabs. So we're ready here. We're ready to okay. plate. So right now what we'll do is we'll keep the heat on. Okay. We'll take the crabs out. Okay. We have my linguine here. You have the linguine that you already strained. Okay. Great. Now tell me a little bit about the business. 12 years ago, I had an opportunity to purchase. We could throw the pasta in right here. In. Okay. I had an opportunity to purchase O&D. I was doing the same type of work, but I was doing it for another company. And I just felt it was time. It was time for me to move in the direction I wanted to move in. I had to do it for myself. The opportunity presented itself. I was able to acquire O&D Builders. For the first several years, I took my time to build up the company, and then my brothers joined the firm and now helped so me to build it. So it's a family business. So now my brothers are part of the business, yeah. and we build it together. But I yet, couldn't do it without them. It all came from your family, your parents, your grandparents, yeah. even the cooking, right? Where did this come from? So everything family. is from, like we had said before, right. the roots. When we came here from Italy, the family was in construction. Right. It's all they knew. Right. Um, and all they also hands. knew, they, built they worked their hands, country. just like the kitchen yes. and just like, exactly. you know, the city. So I followed my father into the field and I okay. followed my mother into the kitchen and right. since been doing it since. Now, I don't know how I got into construction, but I, I think by it. default, <laughs> I think by default, you're right. But I have to say, you know, cooking, family, friends, the table, true. breaking bread, it's all part of our culture. It is so true. And it's so important. Just think if the world would do a better job at sitting down and eating together, you know, being with family, taking the skills and talents from their parents and grandparents, using them, putting them into work to help other people. No, you're That's right. what it's all about. If people would just spend more time listening right. as opposed to moving forward and being, it, it, there is so much more that can be accomplished. So we're gonna plate now, good. right? Okay. All right, that looks there you great. go. All right. So now hang on one second. What we'll do now is we'll put parsley in there. some basil, some parsley. All right, just dress it up. Wow, that looks good. All right. And then what's next? Look at this dish. That's wonderful. Huh? Oh. What's next? You have to try it. Presentation is everything. Let's taste this. If it tastes bad, at least it looks good. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to taste good. I need a spoon here, too. That's a trick. Ah, uh, uh, that's the only way. Right? I don't want to take it too much of a mouthful. Salute. My goodness, look at this. All right? You'd have some hard bread with here. Biscotti. Mm. Oh, you can't beat this. Mm. Real crispy. What's better than that? And then, if you're eating this at home, we'll be lifting up the crab, sucking all the meat Typically, out. Typically, you would finish your dish of pasta and then you would spend the marathon of trying to get the meat out of the crab. I have to say, Antonio, you did a great job in taking the traditions from your parents and grandparents. Thank you. Food, your business, your Thank skills, you. construction that they took from Italy. 
And those values, we had more of them in this world, I think, as well, would be a better true, place. True, we try to teach, I try to teach my children the same thing. It's, yeah. it's those things that carry you through. And you know, people, what's missing today a lot is family life. There's not enough time, everyone's busy. No one's home, no one's talking to one another, no one's passing on those traditions and telling the stories, you know, about the past. All those things, they teach us something. And that's what's missing that's in today's true. world. Everyone's on the computer, on the internet, and you know, I think they're sending out the wrong message. We overcomplicate things. Yes. The simple things that my mother and father used to say to me are what carry me through my business. Now, maybe they've never experienced the what we're happening now, but it's the same response. Right. It's you'll get through it. Have your faith. Have your family. Right. You'll get through it. Yeah. You know. That's what this show is all about. It's, it's true. It's very true. Faith, and I and I can't people. thank you enough for having me on the show. And thank you. And I hope I embarrass you. Not at all. You did a great job, and uh, you know you'll be doing a lot of work for me. Maybe not in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I appreciate all of it. Thank I really you. Thank do. You. Thank very you so thankful. much. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on the show real soon. I appreciate that. Salut, thank you. Got to the know. And just by the way, I made you an actor today. You did. So now you're, when you're someone finally asks me, on TV. So now the next time someone says, I can say, well, I don't know if you saw, yeah. I was on, you know, Monsignor's show. Okay. Nothing better than that. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of Breaking Bread. And today I think we have to reflect on family. And you know, we have many gifts and blessings in the world. And I think family is one that we take for granted a lot. You look at Antonio's family, all that he learned and all that he took from his parents and grandparents, all the sacrifices they made, and he put them to work. For his own family, for society, for the community, all the good work that he did, preparing food, you know, learning how to cook, all that came to him from his family. And I think at times we take our families for granted. You know, there's an old saying, you can't live with them or you can't live without them. But in the end, we live together as a family, and what makes it special is that we're able to forgive one another. Just think what the world would be like if we saw each other as family. If we fight, that's okay. We disagree, that's okay. We all can't see eye to eye all the time. But when you forgive, it makes a difference. And that's what a family does, and that's what we should do. We'll see you next time on Breaking Bread.